Learn Java the Hard Way, Exercise 4, Escape Sequences. This is a tough one to type in. Um, if you actually type this in from scratch, uh, just by looking at the book and didn't copy and paste, and uh, you got it to compile and show the output, then kudos to you. I actually give my own students bonus points if they type it in manually instead of copying and pasting. Um, let's just compile it. Uh, normally I change directory into the Java code folder at the beginning, but you're probably still in the Java code folder from a previous exercise, so going forward that's what I'm going to do. So Java C. Now let me show you a little tip. Sometimes I'm pretty lazy and I don't feel like trying to type this exactly, so what I'll do is I will copy it right here and say copy and then just say paste escape sequences Java just to make sure that I get the file name right um, let's see and I guess I could do it there too see you, I guess this seems to be slower anyway so it should look effectively like that it should print the word Java on the screen in this fancy font uh, that's taken from from something called figlet so anyway so let's talk a little bit about this code the first thing you're going to notice is on line 5 we have something started with two slashes and if you have a, a text editor that shows syntax highlighting you'll notice that it's probably in a different color it might be in italics or something like that um, that signifies that this is a comment and so the two slashes tell the compiler ignore this line and anything from the two slashes onto the end of the line is going to be ignored by the compiler, which means that we could put anything we want there. We could say, you know, Mr. Mitchell is cool. We could say, you know, this is a test or copyright 2014 Graham Mitchell. You can do whatever you want and it'll be totally ignored by the, by the machine. So, um, comments are used for humans to make a note about what the code does so that you can understand your code later or if you have coworkers who are also coding. Um, comments are pretty important. I do use them somewhat throughout the book. There's also another type of comment called a block comment where you can put several lines of code and anything between the slash and the star or an asterisk and then the star slash is ignored by the compiler. So if you have a big comment to make that's longer than just one line of code, many programmers do that as well. Um, so anyway, so that's a comment. Again, you should probably type the comments because it helps you to understand what the code that you're about to, to look at is going to do. And also, it, um, it'll make your line numbers match up with mine, which will make your thing easier to do. So... All right, so you know that the print command and the print line command will display whatever you put in quotation marks on the screen. Well, what happens if you want to display a quotation mark on the screen, like we did down here when we displayed the V of Java? All right, so how do we do that? Well, most programming languages have what's called an escape sequence. An escape sequence is something you can put inside quotation marks that instructs the compiler that what the character you are about to see should not be interpreted in the usual way. So if it's a quotation mark and you put a backslash in front of it, then the, the compiler knows not to treat that quotation mark in the normal way. The normal way in Java is to begin or end a string. So here's a normal quotation mark. Here's a backslash, which is the escape character in Java. The backslash, uh, depending on your character, your keyboard that you're using, is probably just above the enter key or the return key. Um, you should be able to type it without without doing a holding down shift at all. This character is called a forward slash or just a slash. It's the one that's most commonly used on, on computers like for web addresses and stuff. This is called a backslash and uh, and so a backslash followed by a T means don't print a T on the screen. Instead, print something else. And in Java, a backslash T means print a tab. And so it'll just tab over uh, by a certain amount of spaces. Since it's the beginning of the line, uh, probably that will skip eight spaces, depending on which operating system you're using. Then we've got some blank lines here. Looks like I have one, two, three, four spaces. 
Then a backslash n means don't display an n. Instead, do what's called a new line. So this will go ahead and move to a new line right in the middle of the print statement. So it will print just that, and then it'll move to a new line. And you'll see that in the output, that's what it did. It printed just this, and then it moved to a new line. So here's a tab, here's my spaces, and then it printed that, and then it went to a new line. Then we start with another tab, and then we put some spaces, one, two, three, and then a forward slash, and then one, two, three, four, five spaces. Then this is what's called a pipe character. Um, on my keyboard, it's on the same key as the backslash, except that you have to hold down shift to do it. Um, so it's a pipe. Um, depending on your font, it might have a little gap in between the top and the bottom of it. Here's another backslash N or a new line escape sequence. This is another backslash T or a tab escape sequence. And then some spaces. And then you go like that. So one thing that you'll notice that I try to do in this book to make it easier for you to read, I don't ever put a tab, like I don't ever just press the tab character inside quotation marks. So if you see a gap inside quotation marks in my code, it's because I've put several spaces there. And whenever I want a tab, I usually put backslash T. That makes it clearer for people to read. So on line 8, we start out with two spaces. Although, remember that the previous command was a print command, so it would have stayed on the same line after the pipe. Um, and as a matter of fact, you can see that it prints the J's and then the pipe, and then it stays on the same line. And these are just underscore characters, so that is probably on the same key as the minus sign, or the hyphen, or the dash, or whatever you want to call it, except with shift. So that's some underscores there. And then there's another escape sequence, backslash T in line 9, and so on. Okay, so continuing in line 9, this is a backslash backslash. So remember I told you that an escape character in Java and in most programming languages says whatever you're about to see should not be interpreted in the usual way. So normally a backslash means here comes an escape sequence. So if you want to display a backslash on the screen, you have to escape the escape character. So backslash backslash will print a single backslash on the screen. Do you see right there? So there's my single backslash. Right, so backslash backslash will display a single backslash. Then we have a forward slash. You don't have to escape the forward slash because a forward slash does not mean anything special to Java, so you don't need it to interpret it in the different than the usual way. And then the only remaining thing that's in here that's interesting is the quotation mark. So there's an escape character here, the backslash, followed by a quotation mark. So those will, that means display a quote on the screen. So this double quote will display on the screen. So because we want two of them, we put two backslash quotes on there. If you want to display two backslashes in a row, you would have to put four backslashes in your code and so on. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. It looks kind of gross because your output now here does not line up because you have two characters in your code but only one character in the output. So printing out things on the screen like that can be kind of frustrating but anyway that's basically all we've got going on. Uh, again no study drills in this one because um, because it was pretty hard just to even type the code. But uh, and the next exercise, we'll be doing something new. So uh, happy coding.